Coming to you from Final Third Cigar and Whiskey Lounge in Ingalls, Indiana. Indiana's exclusive Aladino Cigar Lounge. It's the Final Third Podcast. Welcome back to the Final Third Podcast on my birthday. On your birthday. I'm Rob. And I'm Isaiah. And today we are going to be getting into the new barrel pick that just came in finally, the Elijah Craig barrel pick that we did a few months ago. Um, this thing's absolutely delicious, man. It's it's a 122.6 proof private barrel. It's called Hydrate and Calibrate. Thanks Hydrate to and Eric calibrate. Jansen. Yeah, thanks to Eric man. Jansen. You know, we picked that such a long time ago and talked about it for so long. I, I almost felt like a prophet when it There's finally came There's a legend in. on this bottle, and I think so far <laughs> yeah. everyone has tried it, has agreed. It's phenomenal. Well, and the other thing is, is we had talked on the show about only getting like 72 bottles. We got double um, that. We did get double, that, double that, which... I don't think anyone's mad about. Only one person, and she pays the bills. And she pays. <laughs> Lisa Lisa's can suck it up. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she didn't hear that. No. She will later, though. And she then will she'll later. come in and slap me because. No, she'll slap me because you said it. Oh, okay. So it'll be fine. Yeah, that it'll makes sense. Thanks, Lisa. Um, birthday slaps for birthday the slaps. birthday baby. Yes. Um, but, yeah. So, Today, what are we smoking? We're going to be smoking the Knuckle Sandwich set Chef Special from 2023. The new one just came out. This one has the uh, Sumatra, dark Sumatra wrapper over Nicaraguan binder and filler. And um, last time I smoked it, it took me over three hours to smoke it. So we're probably not going to... If it goes that long, we may not have it for the yeah. whole show. So, so we, we ought to get lit on this one before you even get started on the dust. And before. Uh, you, won't, you won't be hearing a... Uh, Three hour long episode. You We're will not, not doing be. that to you. You will not be. Two hours and 58 minutes, maybe. <laughs> no. No. Maybe an hour 30 max. Yes. Um, so I just V cut this knuckle sandwich, chef special Sumatra. Yes. Um, which it held up well. And I believe they all this do. is number 87 on the Sumatra scale for the year so far this year of new cigars. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> It's actually a lighter Sumatra than what most people are coming out with. Yeah, this one is a little bit lighter. Um, and I typically don't like light Sumatras, but I really enjoyed this the other day. Yeah. on uh, it, It's almost like raisin toast for me on the on the cold draw. Yeah. And I'm getting a lot of hay. Still a lot of hay on it. Yeah, I can see that. Well, but, let's light up. Let's light up. I am still rocking the Calibri Soft Flame. This Me is too. the uh, Julius. Julius, yes, yes. Yeah, it's fantastic. You know, I never thought I would be so excited about a Soft Flame until I had this one, and I'm like, I love this lighter. I never did either, but I am getting longer times out of my cigars. And uh, it is a nearly closed foot, so it is kind of tight. Yeah. Um, but we have our yeah. studio audience today. <laughs> our studio audience Yay. today. Hey, whenever we say clap, clap, okay, guys? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's what we No, need. we got some buddies out here that we've been sharing some pours with. Brandon Whistler, longtime favorite here. He's bringing some special picks. And then we got Eric Jansen here, too, another big favorite of ours here. Um, Brandon's shy of the camera, so we couldn't put him on the thing. So he's Man, too good looking for on the camera. A, on light on this cigar. It's um, there's almost a honey component to it. That kind of floral clover honey thing for me. Uh, also cinnamon, and then the retro hail is still red pepper. Pretty spicy. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty spicy. Well, and I'll tell you, this is a good one to talk about this too. So this is a figurado, and by figurado, it's got a it's got a, a tip. A point tip on the on the end you cut, and then it comes to almost a point at the end of the other end as well, just a slight opening. So you imagine can see, if, you can if see a football this, was a limousine. That's kinda, what it yeah, looks yeah. like. So if you can see this, I just lit the tip on this. That's all you need to do. A lot of people freak out, and they really end up lighting all the way around it to get all the way to the collar. And all you have to do is light the tip because it will catch up. And you won't overchar it that way, too. I'm ready for it to catch up. But you know what I'm also ready for? Didn't I tell you to clean your room? That's dusty. 
That's dusty. A dusty pour of the day. So this what do we got for a dusty pour? This is by a uh, toilet water. This is water. an old, <laughs> it does look like toilet water. It's pretty this cool. is the oh, dirtiest uh, dusty pour that we've had on the show to date. Okay. Um, I think I can say that confidently. This was a 175-month-old beam decanter. It was a really beautiful floral decanter. Um, if I'm pretty, if I remember correctly, it's from 1973, nice. and it is a uh, it is 86 proof. So um, this definitely oxidized, definitely lost some volume in the bottle. So here's a question for you: Maybe you know it, maybe you don't. Do lower proof bourbons tend to oxidize easier than higher proof? Maybe because I mean the 101s we had from Wild Turkey are clear as day. 86 yeah. proof is not. Is it just the cork or? I I really don't know on It'd that. Be because maybe check uh, out. Yeah, no, that would be an interesting thing. But I am not that well versed on the Dusties to be able to make that call. I also am not sure somebody would have made a, uh, like a scientific analysis. Uh, that would be that. hard. Um, unless you've just had so many Dusties that you saw, saw a pattern. Which we do need to line up. The dusty librarian, Alan, and get him on the show. We do another yes. another Alan that you guys should should know. Yeah. Um, but what's his last name? Ernst. 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 Yeah. yeah. He's he's provided several of the dusties you brought. Yeah. In for yeah. Us, I've so. got some off of him, and he's fantastic. And I'm pretty sure that's where Will got the the turkey decanter. It is. 100%. You guys got yep. me. And yep. Super clean bottle. Super clean bottle. But yeah, uh, when he dumped that one, so it's a 1985 decanter, which we'll talk more about it when, when yeah. we have on the show. Um, it's it's as clean as a brand new bottle that just <laughs> yeah. just came out of the, the distillery. A 100%. It's beautiful. So uh, this has got the beam nose. It definitely does. It's it's like uh, it reminds me of honey roasted peanuts and yes. a little bit of oakiness. Just light oak though, not not heavy oak. On the palate, it's oaky. Yeah, it's oaky. It it's honey. Honestly, to me, and I'm not meaning this to be mean. No, it's, it's oak beam. water. It kind of is. Uh, there's not much. I mean, we we have been drinking some pretty high proof stuff already. But the um, it really has absolutely zero, zero bite. I didn't know it's eighty six. It is. We've had up to one hundred and thirty two proof already today. Yeah. But this one here is. I mean, it really is oak water. Cool to try it. Yeah. That bottle's that probably gonna last you for a while. I think so. <laughs> yeah. Um, and make a nineteen seventy three old fashioned. That'd be old old fashioned. That would be an old old fashioned. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Um, but it's just, it's not a clean dusty and you know, sometimes, sometimes that's the reality of it. There are some decanters that you'll get into that have completely clean, like, uh, as clean as this brand new Elijah Craig bottle. Yeah. Uh, the liquid inside of there. And there are others where they're pretty opaque and you know so that, on that one the hard did thing you get is, that one, did you get a full decanter and you and you transferred it it was in an open decanter it was not a full decanter so oh so someone so, had already been no, no 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 it did uh, it had just evaporated. oxidized and evaporated okay and that so that cork was shit. yeah 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 it was and you know it, in that time you are using real wood cork and uh yeah. you know over time it is not meant to stand up to alcohol sure it's just not well and i wonder it'd be it'd be really interesting to see because you have some other beam cork beam decanters old yeah. decanters it'll be really interesting to see if they turn out cloudy as well and it could just be the quality of cork that they're putting on their stuff no i i would tell you my uh my other beam decanters, which I've already decanted into bottles that look oh, like did this. you? Okay, clean, clean. Okay, this is this is the so bad that's the outlier. Okay, yeah. which you probably knew it was going to be cloudy when you realized that it was a half an, half empty bottle. Yeah, had never been popped. But you know, you it's still whiskey history, and it's still an interesting thing to try. Oh, it is, it is. Um, but and I don't mean to, I, and I don't mean to shit on it because no, but it is oaky and it feels like almost all the alcohol is almost evaporated out of it yeah and it does the mothball thing 
Yeah. Which is a pretty standard, uh, a pretty standard tasting note for dusty bourbons. But well, you saw me just take down that whole thing, and it did not feel like you've been drinking whiskey. That being said, we we also drank some higher proofers today. Yeah, yeah, we uh, yeah. Brandon brought a magic bag in again. We had um, Taylor, Colonel Taylor. Um, barrel proof, barrel proof batch twenty. Hi there, twelve. Nice. Say hi, Tara. Hi, Tara. <laughs> there you are. Oh, we got a birthday. Yep, happy birthday. Do I need to open this now? I don't care. It says uh, old ass man. Old ass man. He is an ass man. <laughs> I am an ass man. <laughs> Thanks, Tara, for noticing. Anytime. Happy birthday. Wow, that's very original. Celebrate. There's no money in it. Oh, <laughs> I get enough money here anyway. Brother from yeah. another mother. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sweetie. No, he didn't put on his too. walrus mustache for you today. I'll get Tara. that on for you later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did tell her yesterday that if she she said she's going to come in and spank me, and I'm like, I do drop my drawers whenever someone spanks me. <laughs> yeah. Just so I mean, you know. Just honestly, so you know. it's protocol. It's protocol. It, it should be. I'm I'm 55. I can say whatever I want. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> so so another gift I got from my sister. Yeah, I got old Chubb's hand from old Chubb's from hand. Uh, Happy, Happy Gilmore. Gilmore. So it's a solid metal. I mean, this thing is freaking heavy. Ashtray with Chubb's hand. Oh yeah, let's go. Yeah, that's awesome. Let's go, damn alligator bit my hand off. <laughs> oh my gosh. This uh so I just poured up the Elijah Craig yeah. uh, barrel proof pick for both of us and uh already it smells so much better than C923. And oh. I, I don't want to crap on it, but this is way better. So let's let's talk about it before okay. we get into this one. So we did get a couple of bottles of the C923. Super I mean people are seeking this bottle out. Everyone's yeah. talking there's yeah, they are. I think I don't know if it was Minnick or who it did who was uh, Mash was, and Drum. Like Mash almost drum. every whiskey YouTuber has said this is like the holy grail of the holy grail. Craig's. I mean you're talking thirteen years, I think hundred and thirty seven. Thirteen set thirteen years, seven months, something like that. Yeah. Um, hundred and thirty three proof. One thirty three proof. And honestly, Not it was shit. Good. Yeah. It was terrible. I mean now Again, it's me, but it is really uh, to me over oaked. Yeah, no complexity other than a shit ton of oak. Yeah, and cherry, and cherry, and, and not and good medicinal cherry. cherry. Yeah, I, not good I, cherry. I talked about like cough syrup cherry. Yeah, it, it, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I think it, ha, it has to be just because it's the oldest thing they put out in a while. It's gotta be. But it was not. I will be interested to oak. try it again once the bottle has got some air time in it. Um, and so see how if long that makes is a it difference. good for air? I mean, how long does it really start changing it? Well, I remember people talked about with Re Remus Repeal Reserve 5, like that bottle, for whatever reason, everyone said, drink it past the shoulder and then let it sit for a couple weeks. Okay. Go back to it, and it's a different bottle. Okay, so we'll and, try that one. And, this. you know, it could just be something where you get a glass, you pour it a couple hours before you're going to drink it, and just let, let it sit. sit. Okay. Um, and that, I may try I don't that know later. if that's the difference, but you know, sometimes it does knock down some of the oakiness. Of course, you are evaporating alcohol at that point. Right. But, you know, if your bottle Which, is, drank, hold up to that. is drank down to like a quarter full, there is alcohol that fills that space. So yeah. you pop the cork and that that bottle was no longer 133 proof or whatever it is. Right. You're not that, dropping that much, but it is not exactly what But that it says. change in like like getting the bottle down to where it is here. That change what you're doing is you're adding air to it and helping it breathe. And that will change the bottle. And yeah. usually 99% of the time it improves the taste. I think you're so. You're not getting that hit of the um, ethanol right at the nose. Yeah. So I mean, and I even had that with the Parker's Double Barrel Blend that I cracked during my wedding week. It, the first couple pours off of it were like, okay. Yeah. And then we just let the glasses sit out, and then it was just like, oh. Oh, damn. There's the oaky caramel yeah. that I wanted out of it. Yeah. And uh, it, 
So, I mean, it would be interesting. I will tell and you. It, if this you, is not approved science. This is no. whiskey science as far as whiskey science goes. Um, and I, but I do think that there's a big difference. And it could be that's what that bottle needs. But I don't think anyone should be spending $150 on secondary don't. for it. Like people are trying to charge right now. Unless you are a nut that love, I'm not nut, but unless you're an oak nut. If you love all the oak, this is, you may love it. It may be your jam. I will say we've got, we got a couple bottles in. I will have them on the, I've got one on the shelf now. Um, I've also got the, I think the A123 up there right now. Um, if you want to try the, the, the C923, you let me know. And I'll I can pour you one. I'll give you I'll give you the pour of that one instead. Give you a chance to try it before you go out and try to seek a bottle. Because I mean, everyone's seeking the bottles right now, so I'm sure secondary is going kind of crazy on them. But honestly, try it before you buy it. You know what bottle I want to seek now after trying this is this hydrate and calibrate. Oh my god, it does not. <laughs> In oh. the best way possible, it does not taste like Elijah Craig Barrel Proof to me. Well, and I'll tell you what. I like, am, it is I very off like, profile for I them. do like some of the Elijah Craig Barrel Proofs. Like, C922, still one of my favorite barrel proofs I've ever tried. Um, this one may be the best Elijah Craig I've ever tasted. And I, I may be biased just because we picked it. I love this. I get vanilla cream soda on the beginning and caramel on the finish, and that's exactly what I got when we tasted it. And I love it. And it's 122.6, so it's still got some good proof to it. Yeah, and there's almost, and I don't want this to put anybody off, but there's still that, like, that scotchy salinity in there, too, which, yeah. like, makes it more of, like, a sea salt caramel yeah. at the end. And it's really... <laughs> it's unique. It really is. It's honestly one of the... It's probably one of the most off-profile Elijah Craig's I've had. I've got quite a few Elijah Craig picks right now, and I don't have a single one that tastes like this. Uh, which, you know, that tasting would be, it now, like I'm proud of this. I, I, I really too. am. Yeah. And I know you picked a different one because you had picked the one that was a little higher proof. And also a lot more on the medicinal side. But that's your jam. I'm a proof hound anyway. But we had, what, eight, ten people on the pick? Yeah. And I think two people picked different ones. Lisa picked another one, too. Honestly, I think part of it was she was getting proofed out. And I think she ended up picking just the lowest proof one because yeah. I think it just hit her palate a little bit better. You picked the medicinal one. Everyone else picked this bottle. But I think everyone that's gone back to it, including you and Lisa, after trying it, it's... It's solid. Uh, okay, so genuinely on that pick day, this was my number two, but I sat there between my number one and my number two and just went back and forth and back and forth and got refills to figure out which one was going to be number one. Now, I me. will tell you right now, and you tell me if I'm wrong, if we'd have been at a standstill half and half, you probably would have leaned to this one beside the other one. But by the time it got to your vote, it didn't matter. It was already yeah. past you on the number of people. That there were was the only one wrong answer that pick day, and it was the one Lisa liked. <laughs> because it was the lowest proof one. I mean, genuinely, her. I think yeah. it was the lamest one in the lot. Yeah. Um, and it could just be that we are proof junkies. You know? And we kind of are. We I mean, are. We did get a 148 proof brandy in here, which, by the way, is selling like crazy. I believe it. Uh, those are... They're so good. Yeah. They really are so good. I, uh, yeah, I have no regrets about those bottles. No. What I really want to do is take the one finished in, or the one that was aged in the Lee W barrel and do old fashions out Dude, of it. I think okay. it would be fantastic. I'll tell you what, I've done two things. Okay. And both of them, I took an ounce of each. Okay. One, I did a Toronto with it. Okay. One, I did an old fashioned with it. The Toronto with half and half, freaking amazing. Well, the old fashioned was really good. The Toronto was amazing. I, I believe that because the uh, the Fernet, the one that has the uh, the port in it, the port rye barrel. Yep. Um, I think those like more cherry, those dark fruit notes that that, that one carries would work super well with the Toronto and just yeah. be a. A good time. I think if you were just to do the the Lee W barrel one in an old fashioned, uh, It'd be perfect. Well, and then if you had the Fee Brothers barrel aged bitters, which lean more cinnamon, more clove, 
I think that would be your perfect fall old fashioned. Yeah, well, I would say I will say don't drink thing too many of too. them though. Well, <laughs> and I when I did it, I based it on an ounce and a half. Now I did I did mine with an ounce of each to get full two ounces, but honestly, in an old fashioned, an ounce and a half is what you need. Two yeah. ounces will just be hot. Yeah. Oh yeah, Scott. Well, we got all the cheers. We got Scott cheers. Deshaun. We got Eric Jansen. We got Brandon Whistler. We got Tara Hibbert. We got Lisa Boylan. We got Isaiah, whatever the hell your name is. Carol. I know your name. You're my boy, remember? Oh, and me. Isaiah and Boylan. Me. And me. Damn you it. don't get a cheers. Shit. You're my boy. You're my boy. You're my boy. I am so happy with this. Oh. Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Get in um, here. Get in here and try it. I mean, my God, this thing, like I said, I think it's it's my, it, right now it's probably my favorite bottle in the bar. We're going to have it a little while, but we not will. that little, not that Yeah, long so a there's while. a little story behind that. So when we first did the pick, they told us, oh, you'll get about 120 bottles. We're like, huh, I wonder where the rest of the, where, where the whiskey's going, you know, somewhere yeah. it's going. Yeah. And then I got a note, you know, a couple weeks ago said, you're getting 12 cases. I'm like, huh, that's only 72 bottles. What the hell happened to the rest of our whiskey? Yeah. Well, no one knew, including including Heaven Hill at the time. No one knew that there was 12-pack cases. So we got 144 bottles. So it's even better. So we're going to have this for a while. Yeah. Uh, but considering the fact that you sold through three bottles last night, yeah. I think these first this first week and a half or two weeks is we'll going to lot. annihilate. I think it will. This, uh, this pick. Mm-hmm. It really is special. Um, this is a pour for sitting out by the fire. Um, I just got a solo stove this week to oh, put on the back yeah. patio. I've been wanting to get one, man. I haven't. I just haven't bought yeah. the bullet yet. So once I get the lights up, I'm gonna probably have everybody over on a Monday cool. night sometime. So you can. So come wait, enjoy. is this the first recording we've done since? No, first one we do since the wedding. No, we did first la- one we posted. No, last no, we week was the after wedding. the wedding, but That's we right. were focusing on our guest. Yeah, yeah. So, so how's the first you know couple weeks of marriage? It's really good. Um, so we never lived together before um, marriage, so it's definitely different. <laughs> there are no no reason for your finger <laughs> quotations, Rob. It is definitely different. Like even just sharing a bed with somebody, it's something to get used to because like yeah. i used to get great sleep like <laughs> it's spread out in the middle of the bed straight up like is she a cuddler in bed she likes to think that she is but <laughs> <laughs> i will tell you right not now quite getting it i did hit the lottery with lisa because neither one of us are cuddlers so we get in oh. bed we get ready to bed then we're like eh, we get, get our sleep <laughs> leave me alone yeah yep. <laughs> yeah yeah Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's where I am. I'm getting uh, too hot. This cigar. Yeah. So okay. freaking good. Talk about the cigar since it just finally opened up. Yeah. I mean, the- you still get the red pepper on the retro, but you're getting a little bit more black pepper on the palate. Um, all the baking spice notes are hitting nice and solid. I will say it feels like it's burning a little faster than it did the other night. Yeah. Maybe I just... Was it a, a moment? I don't know. It could have been. Uh, on the palate, it rem- it reminds me of the AJ Spice. Like that really almost fermenty hot sp- hot sauce spice. Yeah. yeah. Um, where it's that slightly vegetal, and not in a bad way, not in no. an unfermented way. But it's it's really that, uh, <laughs> I think of it like the Frank's hot sauce spice. Um, and I, I say that in a loving manner because that's my go-to, like, biscuits and gravy, get Frank's hot sauce, and yeah. just get Frank's hot sauce. Oh, yeah. Well, and the, the cool thing is, too, like, on the palate, just just take a puff without retrohaling and blow it out. It's clean. It's very clean. Yeah. Um, you there's don't still get, a little bit of spice on the back There's end, a little though. bit of spice on the back end, but it's just a – you're not getting that heavy kind of hit uh-uh. of, of flavor. You're just getting a nice, clean palate of flavor. Uh, this is one I feel like, and we'll see how it gets to the end, but this is one I feel like you could smoke it, and then afterwards, after you have a drink or whatever, you're going to have a decent palate for another cigar. You really are. You could smoke multiples, and this is a medium to full cigar on yeah. the strength level, so so very cool. Yeah. I like it so far. So uh, yesterday, I was rating my humidors, 
And that's humidors plural. Nice. And I was super, well, I was rating them one because I was trading Mike Bother cigars for an offset smoker. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, because he picked it up. It was yeah. the one that was out here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Never was used out here either. No, I Actually, mean. Actually, it may have been. I don't yeah, know. it was. Okay. I mean, it still had some corn husk in there when I was looking mm. at it this morning. But uh, I was running through my humidors seeing what I got. Dude, I thought that on my bachelor party night, we had smoked the last box of Mildias Marinitos that I had. Had another box, And I huh? found another full box. And I'm not talking 2023 Marinitos. I'm talking 2022. Yeah. So I must have bought four or five boxes of those. I think I think you bought two boxes here. But I think when you went down to Smoker's Abbey, you got more. I must have. I think you did, because we were out of them. You bought more when you went down to Nashville. This legitimately seems like the most hoarder thing for me. But when you find a cigar that you like and get it's em. limited, just, get just em. buy them up. Yeah. And uh, the 2023 Marinitos, great. Do you still have any of those? I do. I still yeah. have several of them. People come in here and try them and buy them. Yeah. Still fantastic. Hell, I still have the some 2020... of the Four Kicks Especial, the, the Lanceros. Oh, my gosh. I, I found another. The Azul Rose. I still got a bunch of all those. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the the Marinitos are fantastic. They're even better after a year sitting around, though. So we're sitting here talking about Crown Heads. Super exciting news. Okay. Jake Sanders is now our rep here. So we got Jake. So we're going to be, we're, I've, I've been talking to him, texting back and forth. We're going to be setting up an event with Jake. We love Jake. He's been on the show Solid before. Guy. I mean, uh, we love Dave Payne. Dave Payne's a great guy, too. Jake's been, I mean, Jake lived here. He's been in here a lot. He's He's a buddy. Um, it's going to be a blast having him yeah, as, a, so, as our uh, rep. Jake used to be a manager at Burn. Burn, yep. By uh, Rocky Patel, the Rocky Lounge downtown. Yep. And um, you're talking a like 23, 24 year old guy that was given the reins at Burn. That says something about yeah, the guy. Uh, yeah, super great character, um, knowledgeable, great palate too, legitimately knowledgeable on the. And cigar. he's also into bourbon too. And the best thing about his palate is he will tell you that the Mildias is Crown Head's best cigar. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> he always smokes the Mildias. I was uh, I was uh, looking online this week trying to figure out if I should buy some of the La Vareda, um, which is their new premium line. Honestly, I want to try there, them probably get some. purely because they are Crown Heads. I'll get some, and they're going to be in the low 20s on the price point. Yeah, I... I'll, I'll probably go ahead and get I some. I saw them online. Like, the smaller ones were in that 1850 range. And this was online. Yeah, and so this was no taxes. before the taxes that were probably going to hit at checkout. But I didn't want to do it. I, I am legitimate. I just want to try one. That's it. But this is also one of the cigars that after the first of the year, um, when our tax cap hit, this is going to be one of the ones that's going to be able to drop a little bit once yeah. we buy them after the first year. So, uh, And remind the people of the tax cap. So right now, the tax cap, well, right now, taxes in Indiana are 24% across the board, no cap. So every cigar, you add 24% no cap. tax that's, on. That's TikTok talk. Yeah. So basically, every cigar you get, there's 24% taxes added to that cigar before you purchase it. At the... Jan- January 1, Indiana's finally passed a tax cap, but it's a dollar cap. We're going to be fighting really hard. I'm part of the PCA in Indiana now. We're going to be really fighting legislation hard to try to get down, down to 50 or 52 cents. First step will probably be 72 cents. If we can get down to 52 cent cap and we do our 10% off box prices, now we're competing with online prices. Yeah. So that is going to be huge. Well, really that and we it, it's looking like a lot of the online retailers are finally charging. They're being required to. A lot yeah. of them are, yes. Uh, state tax. So, yeah, you can still get cigars on C-Bid, but in the checkout, you're going to be hit with Indiana tax. Still, a, they will be cheaper. I've then. had a couple of people. So, like, I'll shout him out. Dave at Smoke, uh, um, Smoker's Choice, um, super solid guy, the owner of Smoker's Choice and Mr. B's. Um, he said every, occasionally what he does is he buys a few things online just to test the system. And he says last order he got came in and added 24% Indiana taxes to it. I love that. 
I do too, and I know, I know, I know. People hate that because that's where they, you know, they buy their cigars. But honestly, how would you like to uh, pay shipping and taxes on your cigars? Yeah. Well, you don't want to come and support brick buy, and mortar. Buy brick and mortar. That's yeah. It. So that's what you're finding is, especially a lot of the, a lot of the regular brands out there that aren't like the, the big warehouse store brands. Um, they tend to focus more on brick and mortar than they do online. Yeah. And that helps us because nothing's worse for a customer or for a brick and mortar than to have a cigar in here that's ten dollars that you can buy for seven fifty online. Oh, it's terrible. It it sucks for all of us. Um I know you can save money by buying online, but honestly, we're all in that that world now where it's like support local small businesses because they're the ones that are going to be there for you in the long run. Well, and Cigars International or Thompson is never going to have a lounge for you to smoke at during the winter. Right. Um, especially if you are in a state that has any a taxes. harsh winter or, or any, any taxes. Or any tax. Yeah. Because CI and Thompson will only set up in states with tax without taxes. Florida, New Hampshire, Pennsylvania. That's pretty much it. Yeah. I think. Yeah. So, so that's, that's good news. Um, Lisa just sent me something. She wants me to make sure I don't forget to say, so I'm going to say it now. Yeah. Um, we're have, we actually have some vacation time set up in here, so we actually have to close down three days. So we're going to be closed um, October 10th, 11th, and 12th mm-hmm. in here. We're going to be opening back up on Friday the 13th. Tam gets to work Friday the 13th, so that will be great. Which, uh, if you've ever known about Friday the 13th, check out your local tattoo parlors because a lot of them do Friday the 13th specials. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, damn. Um, they'll do, uh, there's a lot of tattoo shops. What about Halloween? Because my, my next tattoo session is on Halloween. No. Damn uh, it. Damn but uh, a lot of them, a lot of them will do, uh, they have a flash sheet that they'll set up and they'll make a bunch of stencils and you just pick one and you pay a set price and They'll just That's run cool. people through. Oh, yeah, it is kind of cool. That's and very cool. I know uh, a couple of the shops in Nashville, they do it, and I I join people for Friday the 13th and just wait around with them. Yeah. I am never one to get, like, flash tattoos, but, hey, if that's your thing, like, yeah. it is a cool time to go do it and support local tattoo artists. I like that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Are you leaving us? See ya. See you, Tara. Thanks again, sweetie. Love you, too. You have a good night. Me, too. But uh, what are you getting on Halloween? Um, I'm finishing out the inside of my arm. Thank you. So um, I'm not I'm not sure exactly what all we're gonna do. Um, one thing we're gonna I'm gonna do is I, I gave the girls all three of my or, so I've got three daughters and my wife. I gave all four of them an option whether they want to use their birth flower or their favorite flower. So I'm gonna get probably all four of their favorite flower in here and figure out a way to tie it all together. You going back to Jay for it? Yeah, cool. Jay's gonna finish out Good the arm man. for me, so I'll be getting Good. that all done on the Halloween. So Rob will have the uh, the equivalent of a Harlem hoodie on one arm. Yeah, the half sleeve. I mean, I wear sleeves all the time down to here, so it almost it almost covers my. I arm. keep trying to talk Victoria into doing a Nashville trip so I can go and get more tattoos, and she's not quite sold. But, uh, Do you think she'll ever get a tattoo? She maybe. Uh, I could see her down the road. I could that. see her doing Especially it. Especially once you get her into bourbon. Yeah. We're getting there. Definitely. We're, we're, you're you're Definitely. getting there. Definitely. Um, but uh, no, I'm, I'm trying to get more, man. I, yeah. I like the backside of my arm is just bare, and I'll look at that in the mirror and be like, man, it oh. doesn't even look like I have tattoos, yet I have like, I mean, I say four, but it's four giant tattoos. Yeah, like, yeah. It's not, they're not well, and small that, That's the thing, too. That, the reason I started on the low ends, because I always wear short sleeves. So it's like I kind of wanted them to show, and I figure eventually I'll, I'll finish out the arm up above, and maybe that'll be something more personal or something up there, and that's fine. But what's up, yeah, buddy? It, uh, up top it, uh, for Rob, he's looking at doing a pinup of Lisa. Yeah, thank you. So. <laughs> nice. He literally Look didn't good. hear that. He's busy heard, talking. No, no pinup. Sorry, <laughs> Lisa pinup. Lisa though. pinups. Yeah. yeah, yeah. As much as Lisa would hate me having a pinup period with her, she would even hate it more. 
I think she'd that, be that into ain't gonna it. give me she'd any like loving. That. that ain't oh, gonna yeah. give me any loving at all. Yeah, you don't get any anyway. I'll get a, I'll get a pinup of you on the inside of my arm. Well, on the thigh. On the thigh. It's gotta be the thigh. You're a little bit bigger than the, the front yeah, arm. Yeah, I am a little bit bigger than your <laughs> forearm. We're not doing life size. Not life size? <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't be able to fit. <laughs> Our wonderful new table is brought to you by Deadwood Live. That's D-E-D Wood Live. Go check them out on Facebook and see what Derek can do for you. From bars to tabletops to a giant podcast table, they specialize in making super high quality furniture from live edge woods and reused barrels. So reach out to them on Facebook and see what they can do for you. But, uh, oh, man, married life is, is good. Um, I am really enjoying it. It's, it's nice not having to be everything for yourself. Like, you know, like living alone, you, you kind of have to make some choices about what you're going to get done around the house. Yeah. Now it's like, well, she can accomplish stuff, and so can I, and then we can both, like, hang out at the end of it yeah. or like watch a Netflix series or, or do something like that. Nice. I, uh, we did finish up murder among the Mormons Oh yeah, um, on Netflix, which is an interesting show about some guy who was forging documents in the eighties. And then to cover up his forgeries, um, sent some bombs to people oh. and, uh, tried to kill them. Nice. And, uh, I mean, them, as God would tell him to do, as Joseph Smith would tell him to do. Well, I mean, that is their God. I mean, come on. Uh, Let's okay. be honest here. You know what? I can talk about it. If you're Mormon, you're not smoking cigars. If you're a devout Mormon. That is very true. Yeah. Very true. So uh, it is one of the most. I think there's. I have seen other religions that I will say, oh, I can see where they're coming from. Yeah. Like, the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints doesn't make any sense to me. You're, you're talking about some dude in his 20s that supposedly had a dream that an angel came to him and told him in somewhere in the woods where he could find these, this book that was printed on golden plates that, that, Seems legit that, that so far. contain the Book yeah. of Mormon. And you know what? They don't have the book. You'd think a sacred text would have been passed down from generation to generation, especially something of gold. Are you going to try and tell me that it got melted down? Like, No, the government would, has that. Oh, the government. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure it's I'm under sure. Wall Street somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I, it legitimately makes no sense to me. And then the the partner of the Bible that they use alongside of that. Like they're literally contradictory texts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to get around it. Yeah. Um, it yeah. doesn't make any sense to me. Um, if you're a Mormon, you're not listening to this. So I don't no. care. And if you are stop, <laughs> stop what listening to this. Oh, okay. Because you're, yeah. you're against your religion. Yeah, actually. Yeah. M- Mormons do not drink. They do not, uh, devout Mormons won't partake in any addictive, uh, Substances. So now, like, now when a devout you get to the, won't even. It was only recently accepted for caffeine. So now they oh, can drink sodas. Nice, nice. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you get to ones like Scientology, I mean, obviously God is a spaghetti monster. It's obvious. Come obviously, on. obviously. So that's got to be real. Uh, but you're talking about these <laughs> religions that came about in, in uh, like Mormonism came about in the 1700s. It's just. That long ago, I thought it was. Real, I thought it was re- more recent than that. As far as world religions go, that is way that is recent. recent. But I'm yeah. still saying I thought it was even more recent than no, that. No, it was. I okay. think it was 1776. Oh, uh, don't oh. quote me on that. 1776. You know, that was a good year for our country. <laughs> yeah, in Mormonism. Uh, don't quote me on that. But yeah. I am. It was in the later 70s. But thinking about that, that is a very new world religion and I don't even know how popular it is worldwide. I have no idea. I, yeah, I have no idea at all. Dude, I just got a blast of freaking vanilla caramel on this whiskey. Vanilla caramel. Which is my jam for bourbon. 
God, that is so good. It is really good. It has a nice oak balance in there, too. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just under 11 years old, so... Maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe the maybe once you get past the twelve year mark on the Elijah Craig's, when the oakiness starts kicking in hard. Yeah, so I don't know. I was thirteen. Uh, I was kind of researching, listening to podcasts about this talk, uh, and it was mostly centered around the Maker's Mark seller aged. The thing that most distillers do. And that is a wide generalization. So take take that as what it what you will. When I say the thing that most distilleries do, yeah, um, is once a whiskey gets past a certain point, they will either put it into a cool warehouse or just take it to the bottom of the warehouse. They will yeah. take the barrels and move them lower so that there is a more even climate that's interacting right. with the barrel. They don't want the rat. The, the changes that come with being at the top of the Rick House. Because in Kentucky, you can't just leave something at the top of a Rick House for so many years and not expect it to be over oaked. Yeah. Like, um, I forget who it was that I was listening to this week, but they were talking about even the, uh, the BTAC stuff. And uh, this is all hearsay, so take, take it as that but there was a eagle rare barrels that were 15 years old and they were like hey this is this is a contender for eagle rare 17 well it's got two more years so what will we do throw it in they legitimately have like a refrigerator room that they will put stuff in spend it for basically two years. Yeah. Uh, so, so it's it not interacting change. with the barrel in a violent way Which anymore. honestly is not a bad move. No. Because y- y- now you're throwing a 17-year statement, which is going to people go nuts over, but it's got that 15-year flavor profile, which, you know, maybe that's where Eagle Rare maxes out. Uh, and, 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 you know, there could be barrels that are sitting in a conventional rickhouse for that long. And are doing just fine. But others, you're just like, this one's ready, but we got a meet and age statement. So here's, I don't know if you know the answer to this, but I'll ask anyway. So like Pappy Barrels. Okay. Do, is there a certain part of a warehouse where most of those Pappy Barrels come out of? And are they at a lower point in a corner somewhere so that they don't change? They change there slow There is over time? a specific warehouse for that makes sense. Uh, Pappy. And yeah. uh, I mean, even talking with the guys at Starlight, they were saying... Yeah, we can't reach these high age statements in our conventional warehouses. Right. So what do you do? You dig underground. Well, um, that's the thing. It, like Pappy Fifteen is not over oaked. It's got. It's definitely got more flavor. Once you get to that twenty three, it's a little. It's pretty much over oaked to me. I think. Well, um, I haven't tried it, but I thought you had. Fifteen is. Fifteen is. Is edging on stop. oaky for yes. me. So I could imagine that the 20 and the 23 are over oak. Unless they do something like you just said and then move it into a more refrigerated area. Which it, This is speculation, and I will say it is that. But they should... <laughs> that's the wrong one. No, that's the one I wanted. Oh, okay. Okay, there you go. We'll, yeah. do, that. we'll do that one. Um, they should be moving them to the bottom of the, of the rick house. Um, yeah, yeah. But you talk about barrels like Old Forester Barrel Proof. You know, those are super oaky. Yeah. And those are in heat cycled warehouses. Guess the age statement, like average age statement on those. Uh-huh. Four years. Yeah. Uh, but between the heat cycling and the not rotating barrels, everything like that, you're able to get more oak presence than you would otherwise. It, it's the thing with Texas, you know? Texas yeah. can over-oak it a, a barrel at two years. Right. Just because there's so drastic of changes. Which is the reason why some places like Balcones are putting in those temperature-controlled warehouses that are able to m- monitor and, and, and there's, do something And there's specific. a lot of smaller distilleries that are beginning to dig underground so that they have more yep. cool air coming into the into their rick houses. Yeah. Um, I, 
I heard an interesting conversation this week on whiskey, and it was talking about consumer burnout. Um, and I would like to hear your thoughts on it. So burnout, especially in the church world, you would think, oh, it comes from just overusing somebody. But I think a uh, on a deeper level, it comes from unmet expectations. Sure. So you're pursuing something, you're getting there, you're building this thing, and nothing happens. Right. Um, and I think unmet expectations is what you get a lot in the uh, whiskey world of people buying product, buying bottles, or, or even hearing amazing reviews on things and just not living up to it you're yeah i mean your median bottle price right now i would think if you were to go um to a to a liquor store you're talking probably 70 bucks at this point which yeah. like when i got into this you were talking you could get 10 year bottles in that 40 to 50 bo- uh, dollar range right. which again i am 24 so uh, but but over the past years that's changed and and, you, and then we talk about bottles like the c923 everybody's raving about it yeah nobody's really tasted it yet you and i tasted it and said that is not great no no if you are an oak nut and you love it you it might be your jam if it is come try it if you want to find a bottle find a bottle man but what do you think? What do you think about that? Like just people being completely burnt out on whiskey because of chasing something and it not living. Well, up. and I think you're seeing a lot of that now with even the big dogs. You know, Buffalo Trace, Heaven Hill, Jack Daniels, um, just those three, for example, yeah. starting off, which are putting out some of the biggest limited releases. Yes, today, but they're also they're they're putting out new stuff yeah and i think it's because you know jack daniels has always st- stood on jack daniels single barrel that's going to be your outlier yeah now they're putting out new stuff but i think it's i think it's for that reason people are getting bored with the same old stuff and then you got these smaller distilleries like starlight for example that's putting out all these finishes that are getting people excited about whiskey you know even more and I think the big dogs are going, you know what? Let's do it. Let's try it. Let's, let's throw some shit in an amber on a barrel and see what happens. Yeah. And they're all doing that now, and it's, it's keeping people interested. That's the big thing, especially in America. You know, it's easy to get bored quick. I mean, there's so and, much to offer. And, and it, I guess there's a parallel even with the music industry is where you are chasing that next hit. You're chasing the next uh, big radio Unless single. you're Taylor Swift. She's just printing money. She is. I and I mean, uh, good on her. You know, I'm not a Swifty fan. Good on her. Oh my God, that girl is printing money, and yeah. she's got. You know, she goes to. She's. You know, I don't know if she's dating him or not yet, but she's going to Travis Kelsey games with the Kansas City Chiefs now because he gave her a friendship bracelet at the game because she gave him one at her concert, and so she invited or he invited her to the game and she came. I'm like. How would you feel if you're Travis Kelsey, one of the higher paid players in the NFL, and you're like pennies on the dollar of what this girl makes? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that girl is printing money and good for her. You know what? She's she's mastered her craft. There are outliers all the way around. There are. You gotta think about all these brands that are releasing bottles that seem to be their money makers. I, I think that I think at this point. Buffalo Trace Distillery is taking a hit on Green Le- Green Label Buffalo Trace, like just the regular one, yep. on Weller Special Reserve, 107. Like yep. all of your staples, even even down to Stag. Yep. Um, because that, at the max, should be an $80 bottle. And then they go around and they put out, uh, there was just a a uh, article this week that was talking about this vintage collection that they're putting out and it's all these 375s of these old labels that they own like old stag and products like that yeah you know what the msrp on those is no a thousand bucks that's idiotic yeah but it's a way for them i will to say stay it's relevant. idiotic 
they'll still sell out. They'll sell out. Yep. and Because uh, people want to have that special bottle. I get it. I get it. Well, and, you know, you can't really judge how well they'll sell or if there'll be a secondary value on a bottle that's a thousand bucks yeah and if if there is i'm sure it'll be like 1500 to 2000 the sad thing about that too is 90 percent of those bottles will never get open 375 of a thousand dollar bottle likely will never get open but buffalo trace doesn't need them to be open no and that's what i'm saying yeah they'll be collector's items they won't be open pours yeah yeah you, you'll, you'll, you'll probably be hard pressed finding any reviews of that bottle. I mean, and that's the same thing with OFC, which is one of their release, one of their super hyper limited releases that I think hasn't been released for a while. Whenever oh, yeah. you see one pop up on secondary, like you're talking, I think like five to seven k. Yeah, um, Insane. which is ridiculous, but it is collector's whiskey. Yeah, and um, that's the thing you have you have different different tiers of people. You got people that, like you and I, okay. we buy a bottle, we crack it, yeah, and we're gonna, I mean, we're even gonna sip it. All we're the dusties that I have are open. Yes, you're gonna you're gonna crack it. We're gonna share it. Which those legitimately, you have no chance of ever getting again. Right, right. But then you also have the people in the middle that they'll buy. You know, say they like like the stag we tried today is the 22B yeah say they love that bottle they'll buy five bottles they'll find five bottles of it they'll crack one and drink it and they'll just sit on the other ones and either trade or keep whatever that's this middle tier and then you got the upper tier of people that literally have a massive collection you look at their pictures and there's not an open bottle on their entire freaking yeah. bar it's like that's just honestly that's an investment that's not that's not a Which there is, bourbon lover. That's an investment. There's value in that, too. There are bourbon investors. Oh, big time. to a certain point, it, it is smart. Um, you, but your everyday allocated bottles are not going to get to that point. Like even no. a Stag Jr. Batch 12, which is one of the most sought-after batches of Stag Jr. Yep. And that was still when it was Jr., not just Stag. Right. Um, we'll never get to that point. But you're talking about people with... Um, some of the older Willet releases with the old label, the wax tops, when it was high-aged Heaven Hill product right. inside right. those bottles, which if you're listening to this, I would like for you to take note of that. That is what made Willet Purple Tops Famous. have a name. Yep. It was never Willet Distillate right. that people chased. If you are chasing Willet Purple Tops, I hope you like the bottle for the four hundred dollars you paid at Big Red last week. Yeah, because they they got that four hundred dollar price because it was Old Heaven Hill, and uh, that is shade. And I have thrown it, but yeah. back when it was seventeen year Heaven Hill product, they priced it at ten dollars a year. Yeah, so you're talking a hundred seventy dollar bottle, um, and that's what they made their name on. Yeah. Not this eight-year product for four hundred dollars. Well, it's and ridiculous. also, and we've talked about this a little bit before, but also, up until this year, they're paying resting barrel taxes on those barrels yeah. every year. Uh -huh. So ten dollars a year is probably not a bad price point, based on the amount of taxes they paid on those barrels, long term, and everything else. That might not have been a bad price, but you're never going to buy that bottle for one hundred seventy bucks. No. You're going to see it for 500 or 800 yeah. or well, whatever. Those old Willet releases will get many thousands of yeah. dollars on the secondary market. But, again, that's something that you can't get anymore. Yeah. And Heaven Hill's not releasing product like that anymore. No. The closest thing that you'd come to it is the Heritage Collection Heaven Hill 17. Yeah. And even that's not a similar proof to what those old Willet bottles were. No. and uh, Still delicious, but... I, I right. still haven't tried it. I have no clue. God, I need to make at least Lisa pour you a sample. Yeah, I'll I, have her do yeah. that. I Come keep on, saying Lisa. I want to do that. Lisa, pour me a sample. She will. She will. She will. Um, um, but it, it's it's things like that. And kind of all this talk about whiskey burnout and everything uh, sparked a conversation on Facebook groups and stuff like that based on the maker's mark Seller aged, mm -hmm. which is a hundred fifty dollar MSRP bottle, right. which is higher than any other maker's mark. 
What's the age on that one? Uh, it's 11 and 12 year whiskey okay. in there. Okay. It is mostly 12 year. I think it's 87% 12 year gotcha. Baker's Mark. Okay. Um, but and on you secondary, tried right that now, yet, have you? I haven't. It's okay. like 425 to 500. And I'm a big Makers fan. Like, I would like to try it. But w- there are these people that were chasing that product. And I have seen re- all the online reviews are talking good things about it. Good. None of them have said, like, this is BTAC level, apart from Fred Minnick, which Fred Minnick is biased on this. And he, he will tell you that in his video review, sure. he's biased in this. Uh, but none of them are telling you this is whiskey of the year, anything like that. So I, all these people in, in in Indiana went down for the release at their gift shop, and I heard so many people get a bottle or try it at a uh, at some place like Evergreen Liquors, yeah, and say, "I am glad I didn't open it. Like yeah. it is worth." It is worth it for me to pay to get the secondary value out of it and never have a pour of this again. Interesting, interesting. Uh, but you got to think, it's Maker's Mark. Yeah, you know, um, it will never be Pappy Van Winkle. It will never be William Larue Weller, which is what people wanted it to be. It's a different mash bill. Right. It's a different yeast strain. In fact, it's a different climate. You're talking a couple, couple counties over, in uh, in Kentucky. Like, they're not even in Bardstown proper. They're right. in Loretto. Yeah. And uh, everybody wanted it to be these famous weeders in the industry, and it just couldn't be that. Why? Why can't it just be like high age makers mark? Right. You know. Yeah. But, yeah. It is what it is. Well, we got a few other things I wanted to point out too. So we got we got some new ciders in now. If you guys are looking for ciders for fall, we got Ash and Elm in here now. Um, we went down to the Indy Fuels um, sponsor night and tried some of their stuff. Lisa fell in love with their ciders. Honestly, they were really tasty. So we Which have some Ash and Elm here. was something I had talked about with you guys. We since did. I honestly, worked here, the reason but. why I didn't have them before is I didn't want to set up another account. Yeah. Lisa took I it upon it. herself to set up the account. God and bless get it you, all Lisa. Um, so we've got Ash and Elm in here now. If you even think you like ciders or don't like ciders at all, you should try Ash try and Elm. Yeah, they so are we've got really the, clean. We've got the Wayfinder, which is just a straight cider, and it's delicious. It's my favorite of all of them. We have a pumpkin one, which Lisa loved. I didn't, I, I refuse to try it that. because I'm not a pumpkin bitch. Um, so I don't she care said, for pumpkin. She told me it was pretty light on the pumpkin. She it liked it, mostly though. She the, really liked it. The and then spices. we have one called Boys, Boys in Blue. It's boysenberry. Yeah. Um, we've got those three in. We also have, I mean, we're, we're, come, we're in October almost. And um, so we've got a fest beer from, um, from um, Two Toms. It's just their straight fest beer. It's a German lager. Um, really clean, really nice. Um, so far, everyone that's had it has loved it. So we've got those in here now. So it's nice to have a few new things there, too. I've been drinking quite a bit of fest beers uh, yeah. lately. And I will tell you, across the board, they go well with a medium to a tick above medium. I'd say a good Habano probably Habano. Be nice with it that. It really is. It's those... Kind Maybe of baking spice quality. Yeah. I could see it going well with a Corojo as well. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know if it would hold up to a Maduro. Probably going to be too much I think much it would, but it, it wouldn't be a great pairing exactly. like most of the Habanos have done for me. Like the Mildias is great with it. The uh, Knuckle Sandwich Habano is fantastic with uh, with Fest Beer. This cigar we're smoking right now would be perfect with a Fest, fest Absolutely. Beer. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Another exciting thing coming up, too, we've got, um, so Lisa's been ca- talking a lot with Jackie Zycan, which yeah. if you don't know Jackie Zycan, you she should. Is, she is the person behind the Old Forester 117 series. Yep, which, which is delicious. They are. Yep. Um, and so she kind of pioneered a lot of things at Old Forester before she went off on her own, and I think she kind of cut her teeth there. 
She's and, working uh, with Neely family now a little yeah, bit. She's working with quite a few people. Oh, and then she also does her own, you know, her own fragrance line now too, which we have here. Which I've been rocking oh. the hiker trash forever. And I feel like in love. I feel like that that bottle just never ends. Oh, I know. I it lasts for a long I time. I don't think that I'm even halfway down, and I've had it for probably three months now. Which, which her claim to fame on that is she's creating some really unique fragrances, but she, instead of starting with alcohol base like a lot of them do, she starts with whiskey base. Yeah. Perfect for her. So awesome. She knows what she's doing on blending. Obviously, she knows how to create fragrances. But we're, we're going to have her on the show here soon. Um, we have two options. We may get her on the show and do a, do a call in with her on a Zoom call. Um, that may be coming up sooner rather than later. And then hopefully in the springtime or maybe early or just right after the first of the year, Hopefully, we're going to have her in here, and we're going to do a ticketed event for her to do her sensory training here. Yeah, and, That'll uh, be a closed day. You have to get tickets to be a part of it because we'll fill the place up with her. The tickets will cost money. But yes. I, I am telling you, it is worth whatever the price will be. Yeah, because she's going to give you a kit, and she's going to walk you through, and you're going to walk out of there as a better whiskey taster and appreciator Period. Yeah. Because she's going to walk you through each flavor. So the way she does sensory, she'll bring out like four special pours. And each one of those pours has specific notes in each one of the pours. And then she'll have all those different pours for you to smell and to taste along with it. So you can pull out specific notes out of whiskey. And it will train your palate in an hour time period to be able to taste through things and really get your notes down. Well, and she will, she'll take you past the caramel. Oh yeah, or cinnamon, or or any of the general flavors where you could probably guess out of a whiskey. Yes, and uh, and you'll understand. It, it is legitimately like, palate training. Like ninety nine percent. Well, I wouldn't say that much. Maybe ninety five percent of the people have no clue what marzipan tastes like. Yeah, you'll learn it there. Yeah. And it, so it's it's really kind of cool. One of the cool things that that Will and Chris, when they did it, they talked. Well, hey, shout out. We might as well keep drinking shout our whiskey out. here. Um, so um, one of the things that they that they came up with was um, there's a certain note you get out of a whiskey. If you get a if you get a um, coconut note in a whiskey, think celery, and immediately your brain will taste celery. Yeah, because the notes are are in the same world and that that kind of stuff's kind of cool because you'll get the vegetal you'll get the fruit you kind of get the notes and see how they kind of play together and again there's no coconut there's no there's no celery in it but your brain is remembering a flavor of something you've tasted before and she's going to train that Absolutely. so that you can pick it up in notes so that's going to hopefully come up first of the year be on the lookout for that one because that one will sell out very very fast uh, Rob I'm looking at the bar right now, mm -hmm. and it is stacked. It really is. You have four different Elijah Craig barrel, <laughs> barrel proofs up there. Yeah. And I think there's one more in the back. Um, actually, I've got, I still have a C922 in the back. I'm going to release on a special occasion because it's still my favorite Elijah Craig yeah. barrel proof. Um, I've got 123. For, uh, two and, year? Probably. Probably. Probably because it's special. Um, honestly, I would love to see people do side by sides at that time at the two year of this and the 922. Two totally different whiskeys. Both of them are fantastic. Yeah, I would love to uh, do do it for just for science. We should know. do that for science. For science, yeah, of course. Maybe we can do it on the next show. We'll do that. Do you have one that's open? I don't. Oh, I don't. I don't want to crack the. I'll one. bring one from home because I've got one open at home. There you go. But we'll we'll do that for sure because I, I think that would be a good because again they're totally different profiles. I mean I will tell you right now. I mean and I am very very biased on this. I still feel like this might be one of my favorite Elijah Craig's of all time. Take it that is, for what it's worth. But it's I think for it me, is. but it's because it. I am hit and miss on Elijah Craig. And I would tell that to anybody. I really am. But this is the best representation of what an Elijah Craig can be. And 
honestly, for me, it almost tastes more like a cast strength McKenna. Hmm. Okay. Have you had Henry McKenna? Never. I've, I've had I've had ten. Yeah. Yeah. But I. Yeah. They I, don't have a cast strength offering. Oh, McKenna. I got you. Okay. But it is more along the lines of that general flavor palette. Of Interesting. The uh, the vanilla, the the brown well, sugar. My, the, I'll bring my ten in. And we'll try them. We'll try them all together. I, I really do think that it drinks more in line with something like that. And uh, you know, I, that's one I haven't tried to get on the bar yet. I probably should. McKenna. McKenna. Yeah, 10. McKenna's fantastic. Um, I don't know if I can get it right away, but we're gonna try. That was one of those. That was the first bourbon that I liked. Oh it was yeah, McKenna Ten. Yeah. Wow. We uh, drank that in the college dorm room, which some people who know whiskey will be like, "What the heck." <laughs> um, but I was in Tennessee at the time, and uh, we had connections to a liquor store and got what we wanted. So nice, yeah. Well, and we're uh, so we're solid in the football season. We're real close to hockey season. Hockey. We got our uh, fuel sponsorship going. We're ready to go with that. Um, we'll be doing some giveaways on some tickets for the games. But if you're if you go to a fuel game. You will now see that Final Third is sponsoring the third period of the hockey games. Heck yeah. So oh, you'll see us all over the place there. If you're looking for something fun to do, go to a fuel game. Oh, dude, it's, it's a blast. And the tickets aren't that bad. No. Even buying tickets are not, not expensive. Not, not like you're going to a professional event. Even though it's still, I mean, you're, you're two and, tiers and down he below. he says professional. Like, it is professionally it's professional. done. It yeah. is. Well, and it's, I mean, there's still a professional team. I would almost classify them as more like semi-pro because what they're doing is these kids are playing for the fuel because they're trying to get to the NHL. Um, the fuel are the, the, the farm team for the Ice Hogs, which are the farm team for the Blackhawks. So they're working their way up to get it to the NHL. So they're playing hard, and it's good hockey. Now, if you ever watch a lot of NHL, it's fast. It's like watching... It's like going from college football to pro football. The speed difference is is totally different. Same way in hockey. I mean, obviously you're you're a pro, getting paid for it, big money. You're gonna be. It's gonna be the top of your game. Yeah. These guys are working their way towards it, and it's a blast to watch these guys. This year, super unique. This is the first time it's ever happened. The EH ECHL, which is the league that the Fuel are in, they they've actually got the first female hockey player that's playing for Kalamazoo this year. She's the goalie for um, for the Kalamazoo. Heck yeah. I am excited because I, that's the second home game that they have. I'm going to try to get out there and hopefully hopefully she'll be playing that game. Um, that's a big step because, I mean, if you ever watch any of the, um, the Olympics, do you see these women's hockey teams? They're good. They are. They're really good. So it's going to be fun to see how she does and and hopefully that will open up the the world for a few more female athletes to get in there and play pro. And there's also a big big talk on um, professional women's hockey starting again. So you know you never know what's going to go. Um, I'm I'm I mean I, I had three daughters growing up playing sports. I'm excited to see more female sports kicking up like that too. And yeah. Um, and if not, mix them in. If they're if they're good enough to play at that level, let them play, man. Yeah. Serious. Okay. So, I am changing the subject back to our bar. Let's go. Because I'm seeing bottles on there that should have been emptied last year. Yes, there's quite a few of them, um, actually. Uh, the Four Gate Indiana batch. Yeah. Fantastic. Totally worth the price. Uh, another one I see on there is the La Incantata Tattoo Series. Uh, yeah. It is... It's classified as a brandy, but it's an Armagnac that was finished in bourbon barrels. If you're looking for something, a uh, change of pace for you, please try that bottle. Yeah. Uh, the Tattoo Series is amazing. Well, what would be good, too, is like if you want to come in here and try our, our two new cast drink brandies, the hazmat brandies we have, get up there and try the Copper and King's brandy. Get up there and try the La Encantada. Um, you're going to see a difference in products, but you're going to see a similarity in quality. Yeah. And they're all going to be tasty. The Lion Cantata is probably the lowest proof of the four. I think it's 107. 107. Then you got 122, 124 for the um, cat or the Copper and Kings. Yeah. And then you're going to get to the 140s for the, the butcher or the um, Oak Lifties. Um, 
and they're all unique. Every one of them's unique. So in uh, in Kintada, that that tattoo series bottle, it comes from um, the Armagnac producing countries. Yeah. So I, I don't remember the age statement on that, but it is higher. Yeah. And uh, it, and it, Lin Cantata is like an independent bottler, Sim- similar thing to like uh, who, a similar thing to like Four Gate or um, Four Square. Yeah, yeah, a lot of fours, a lot of fours, a lot of fours, or even Circle City Whiskey Co. At, the, at this point, um, yeah, uh, where they're independent bottlers of other people's product, and that's kind of what they're cutting their teeth on and. There is value in somebody else seeking out these bottles. La Incantata is going to these places um, in, where Armagnac can be produced. And a lot of these farmers are looking to sell off their Armagnac barrels if they have a bad grape year. Um, they have a bad harvest that year. Well, they need to, they need to make some money to keep the farm going. So they'll go out of their way to uh, to sell to a company like La Incantata. Yeah. And uh, it's fantastic. It is, I mean, it's as grain to glass as, as you can get on uh, this side of the ocean. Yeah, and, you know? and that's a good point. There's a, Like you said, there's a few bottles up there that should have already sold out um, that if, you, if you're coming in here and you want to try something maybe different that you never tried, we have a lot of those bottles up here. Um, I mean, we have we have a couple of the Calumet 15s up there that are great. Um, we got the new Andalusia Key Four Gate okay. Rye. I didn't even see that up there. Um, that one's new. Um, we got a lot of that. It's not been you know not a lot of people have been buying that yet. Um, is it up there? It is up there. I will say our number one sellers across the board are usually our barrel picks, yeah. um, which I'm glad about because we have a lot more of that, obviously. But um, there's a lot of other bottles on there that are great. I mean, the Sweetens Cove 22, still in the top five to ten bottles of the year for me. I even think though so. I, I even though it's a 22, I don't know if it got released till maybe early 2023. Yeah, I don't know, but I'm calling it a 23. It's delicious. Um, there, there's a lot of great bottles up there. So, yeah, uh, legitimately, if you ever come in here and you're like, I don't know what to drink. Just ask Rob. Say, I want something out of the ordinary. Or, or ask Lisa, and they yeah. will lead you towards these bottles that they you may not even be able to find them at your liquor store. Like uh, the Kelt up there. You, yeah, yeah. you can't find it at your everyday liquor well, store. Which those are cognacs. It, it is a cognac. But if you like aged spirits, you'll just like it. It's, yeah. Um, it's really not that far removed from something like a bourbon. It is a fruit based. It's a grape base. Well, we've uh, tried it on the show, the Downmore Cigar Malt. We haven't tried that on the show. I thought we did. No, I've never Freaking tried that. Del- oh, dude, we got to try that. Yeah. It's delicious. Yeah. It's, I mean, obviously, after all the high proof stuff we've been drinking, it's going to be lower proof. It's, it's one of the best of the cigar malts or cigar cigar whatever out there yeah um lower proof obviously i still put joseph magnus cigar blend is my favorite cigar batch blend whatever and then this one's right there with it um very very good scotch it's it's delicious it's a higher dollar bottle too i mean i don't know what the price point if it's approaching 300 bucks Mm -hmm. at the stores must gotta be at least 260 yeah and it's but it's delicious as well we got several of those up here too okay I'm done plugging your bar. All right. We are plenty into the second third of this cigar. Yeah. What are you getting right now? Mm. For me, the palate is like this cinnamon raisin toast. Um, yeah. A little bit of spice on the back end, but I think my palate's become more accustomed to it, so it's not really it's still all through. the freaking red pepper on the nose. Super creamy smoke, though. It the is. The smoke output is. is beautiful. And with this with this pour, it's, it's, it's really good together. Really By the is. way, Grant Mandrell just walked in. Shout out. Grant is the winner of our event last night. So Grant what did came in because we had we had Crux in here, Tony at Crux. We had yeah. an event with Crux, and we had an event with Claro Humidors last night. So he's the big winner, and he won a Crux ashtray, lighter, cutter, and a sign. 
and he won a Claro upright humidor. That's All, amazing. It's a hell of a prize pack. I mean, you're probably talking four or five hundred dollar prize pack. Yeah, it's serious. amazing. So, huh? Yeah, come on in here, buddy. So this is Grant. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Grant's our big winner this week. So he got to win the Crux and Claro package last night. Did you even know that before you showed up tonight? Yeah, I saw it. Okay, good. <laughs> good for you. I saw it yeah. this morning. I'm yeah. like, there's no way I saw the video. I'm like, okay. Yeah, <laughs> and, and it was a really great great night we had. Um, it was a Thursday night, so Thursday night events tend to be a little bit smaller. But good for you because you got in and you won. So yep. congratulations, buddy. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate you, man. Yeah, Grant's been coming here quite a bit lately. He's one of our regulars now, and um, it was really kind of cool to see him, see him win that prize pack. So... Well, and uh, goodness, that that is a crazy prize pack. Oh, it's uh, great. And, and when I was watching the live last night, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I thought, surely they'll break this up between multiple people. No, nope. you didn't. And, no, we uh, decided to do one, one big prize pack, and it was for people that showed up last night. Now, I will say, and it's going to be too late for this, but... Um, you know, we're running our, our event specials through the end of the weekend. If you come in after you saw this show on a Tuesday and you still want to get in on some of the Crux deals, we'll cover you. So we'll, uh, we'll take make care sure of you. that you show your YouTube uh, yeah. listen or the, the podcast. Yeah. And say, hey, I heard about this deal on the show. Yeah. And uh, they'll be sure to. Absolutely. To, yeah. So the Crux deals we were given is 20% off box prices, plus you're getting some free cigars in the in the booth. So by the time you get done with it, you're getting nine free cigars for buying 11. Yeah. It's not a bad day. It's great. It's and Crux are fantastic. My favorite of the bunch is probably still the Bull and Bear. Their Habano is really good. Too. Yeah, the Epicure Habano is creeping up on sales to match the Bull and Bear. Um, on, honestly, there's not a one of them that's not good in different profiles. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm with you. The Bull and Bear, and we got the Robusto Extras in, and fantastic. Fantastic. But say you're uh, looking for a seasonal pairing, do the Fest Beer and the Crux Habano, the oh, Epicure Habano. And you're going to – that's a ticket to win right there. Yeah, yeah. And I don't – know. and, again, I mean – like all fest beers, they'll be fleeting. Yeah. So we've got the we've got the fest beer that we got up here. We also have the Mars and Hotel from Pax Virum. Either one of those, I feel like the Pax Virum one's going to give you a little bit more Is depth that and flavor. In? Yes, more depth and flavor. Where this one's going to be more of a clean German lager. Yeah. So it just depends on what you like there, but both of them are great October beers. And I'm sure there'll be more brands coming out. Oh, hello. Fire truck's heading out. Fire truck. So, yeah, we're, we're almost October, man. We are. I mean, a couple days uh, away. when this is released, it'll be October 2nd. Oh, really? Wow. So, yep, that's right. Yeah. So, uh, getting ready for Happy October. all of the things mm -hmm. that October brings. For me, it just brings, oh, next month is Thanksgiving. And after Thanksgiving, it's my Christmas. schedule is just packed. Yeah, yeah. It uh it's it's crazy. Yeah. But the thing you can look forward to is at the end of the year Rob and I will do our top 5 bottles of the year and <sighs> top 5 cigars of the year. Uh, yeah. I've got I've got a pretty big list right now of cigars. I do too. Yeah. This so year has break it been down. packed. The cool thing is this is the first year in a very long time where I'm going to have two lists. Okay. I'm going to have my favorite cigar releases of the year, but I'm also going to have my favorite budget cigars of the year because there's okay. been a couple of people come out with budget cigars that are phenomenal. Okay. And a couple of them on the list we've got in there right now that are selling great. So, so uh, maybe if we see enough demand for this, we'll do a couple different packs and say, here's here's the top five of the year, and here's the top five budget of the year. I don't know if there's going to be five budgets, though. So okay. Might be at this point two or three. Yeah. But it's okay. We'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll get there. Or we'll do a pack that has, like, top three, and then top three of the higher dollar cigars and, and top two 
of the budget cigars together in one pack and get a discount on all of them that way. So yeah. we'll do that. That'd be a winner. Yeah. But there have been a lot of good bottles this year. I mean, it's going to really be hard to beat this one or the uh, the two brandies for the entire year so far. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure that I can uh, just differentiate to bourbon this year. Uh, I, I mean, even the Old Bones Rye that came in here Fantastic. because of me. I still, I still call that a barrel pick because that was your pick. Yeah. <laughs> um, and honestly, I know um, I hit I know, that the other day, and I was like, "Man, in the colder weather, this is crazy." I'd be interested to find out where the rest of that went because they and I can't remember if it was Naptown or who it was. They did a pick of a seventeen-year-old bone dry, hmm. but the proof is different, so it had yeah. to be either a different barrel or they proofed it down. I think it was different, and if it was a different barrel. I'd like to try them side by side, but this one we got. I actually think Will got a seventeen. I think he did. And I think it was a. I think it was, it was hundred a and. It might have been one hundred thirty-one proof. Where the one we got is one thirty-five. Um, Again, either Rob one and I are proof hounds. Yes, I, I just can't. I can't help you. That being said, I've been going toward some of the more hundred proof options that I have in my bar lately because it's I have two. Um, I for a while, especially during the summer, I was going crazy on barrel proof offerings. Well, like you were also the, going through going crazy on killing bottles before you got married, so you wouldn't have such a collection. <laughs> I was, I was doing that. Um, his liver was screaming by the time he got to his wedding night. His liver was. <laughs> Actually, yeah. I took a break for like four days from drinking anything. That's a good point, too. I will say one thing. We drink a lot on the show. We drink a lot in here. I've done the same thing. I know Will's been doing it. I know Brandon Whistler's been doing a lot of this. You've done it. Um, I've heard a lot of people doing it, and it's a very good habit to get into. Take a couple weeks off every so often. Yeah. Just check yourself. Make sure you're doing okay. Let your body kind of recoup a little bit. Drink lots of water during that time. And then come back into it. You're going to appreciate it more, and your body's going to like you for it. Well, and uh, that that is a that is a good thing. That's one of the things that I appreciate about uh, the Whiskey Tribe. Is yes. If you're, like, deep into their Patreon group or even into their uh, Facebook group, is they will have dry weeks that are scheduled. Yes, and yes. uh, then they do Once a dry a quarter. month. Once a quarter they in, do it. Uh, February, I think. I think they do Do they do the whole month? They do a whole month. So I think February is the whole month, but every quarter they take a week off. Yeah. And that's a, that's a good thing for your body. That's a good thing just to keep you in check, make sure you don't have a problem. Um, obviously, if you go into day two and you're having issues, you might have a problem. Yeah. But if you get to, to a week off and you're feeling better... Then you can ease back into it, and it's it just it's a good thing to do. It's just a good thing to keep in check. Yeah, because this is I mean, as much as we love whiskey and we could drink whiskey pretty much all day every day. Yeah, it's not good for your body long term. As much not, as I would like to tell you that it is, it's not. I mean, it is vegan, and it's gluten free and gluten free, so it's got to be healthy, but, but in, moderation. in moderation. In moderation, yeah, yeah. definitely. But yeah, and and actually. When this airs, if you come in and tell us, no, nah, I'm not going to drink today. I'm taking a dry week. You know what? We will say kudos to you. Yeah. And we will tell you about all the options here yeah. if you're not drinking today. Absolutely. I mean, we've even got some non-alcoholic beer in there right now because we've had a few people doing this. And it's like, here's some, I think we got Heineken Zeros in there right now. We got sodas. We got coffee. Which Heineken Zero surprised me. Oh, it tastes just like Heineken. Just like it's, Heineken. It's solid. It's very solid. So so we do have those options, you know, in here, at least for the most part. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's just a good thing to be a part of. Yeah. There was something else I was going to say, and I can't remember what it was now. That's lame. Yeah. All the alcohol's hitting me now. <laughs> Speaking of taking a break. Speaking um, of... Yeah, the um, I don't know. Go ahead. No, man. Uh, it, it's been uh, it's been really fun for me to find cocktails that Victoria enjoys because she leans sweeter, and most of her 
uh, drinking, like uh, she'll lean towards like sweet wines and uh, stuff. Uh, you know? I've gotten her into semi-sweet territory. Okay, which I feel is a, is, is a pro for me. But you've also gotten her into some whiskey, you know, like bourbon cocktails and stuff. Yeah, that she's uh, enjoying, so, which is not a bad. Uh, I mean, one of the cocktails that was kind of a bridge for her was uh, the Bee's Knees. Which was a, which is a gin cocktail. So it's gin, uh, honey syrup, and lemon. Uh, look up a recipe for it. It's fantastic. But what's the I, one that's similar to that with bourbon? What's it called? It's called a gold rush. Gold rush. But I started putting Starlight's seven year aged bottled and bond gin in that. And she loved it. Oh, wow. But it kind of got her accustomed to some of those aged flavors. Yeah. And then I'm able to hand her a gold rush and say, hey. Uh, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. And, well, and I'll uh, tell you, um, this this has been, and this might And be, these are shaken drinks, so I'm not right. serving them to her over ice. But even shaking a barrel-proof whiskey in a... Uh, in a gold rush is gentle enough for her to say like I could I could get into this. Yeah. And honestly that's a good step to get into to bourbons too. If you if you're a bourbon guy and your or girl and your spouse is not into it or your girlfriend, boyfriend, that's a good way to get them into experimenting with things that you love too. It's just a nice way to actually do things together. Um, I we um I've been trying and I've tried two or three different ones now vodkas that they're aging in barrels. Okay. And, oh, my God, they're good. So you would not believe the amount of flavor that vodka is pulling out of these barrels. Where are you finding these? Like, where um, are you talking Tara about? brought one in, and I looked it up online, and it's nowhere. You can't find it anywhere. This thing freaking was so Tara. freaking sweet. Yeah. And I think it was like 110 proof or 108 proof or something like that. But it reminded you more of a sweet bourbon because of the age of the, of the oak. And it was dark. It was not quite this dark, but it was probably half as dark as that. Well, and the interesting vodka. thing to that is you, you would have to question, like, what is the mash bill? If it's a potato vodka that's aged in, uh, aged in oak, it wouldn't be able to be called a whiskey. But there's a lot of distilleries that are making vodkas off of a corn mash bill exactly yeah that could eventually be a whiskey or a bourbon yeah. and you know it could be a way to trick people into it yeah just by labeling it as an aged vodka rather than a whiskey yeah i was uh listening to the bourbon pursuit podcast this week shout out to them um if you have not listened to that show you need to be. Um, these guys are in the industry. They are interviewing industry people. And they have fantastic palettes. They really do. Um, and they also one of them, which I think is Ryan on the podcast. He's oak sensitive like I am. Oh, okay. So if he likes something, I will generally say, yeah, that's probably for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Kenny on there loves... What he calls sweet oak, what I would call um, pencil shavings. <laughs> okay. It's, uh, okay. Not my thing. But uh, they were talking on there with a guest from, oh, it's a distillery in Texas, but they're mostly doing source stuff. And, oh, Prideful Goat. Okay. And they were talking, and he, the guy that owns Prideful Goat was talking about, um, uh, a Dave Pickrell interview, which Dave Pickrell is one of those guys in the whiskey industry. Shout out to him, though he is dead at this point. <laughs> if uh, he touched something, it turned to gold. He yeah. is responsible for things like whistle pig and stuff like that. Yeah. One of the things that was able to get around TTB guidelines, which is who, like, reviews all the labels and everything like that. There are distilleries that are aging whiskeys in used oak barrels and finishing them in new oak barrels. And it's a, and they are able to 
after the fact, turn that whiskey into a bourbon. Hmm. Okay. Because of the the beverage and alcohol manual, I think that's what it is. It the so someone found a loophole. It is a loophole. Exploiting it. And uh, he said there are a lot of smaller distilleries that are doing it. Okay. Um, and a lot of what's being done on it is these older, higher-aged MGP light whiskeys. Okay. Which are majority corn right. and all these things. They're aging them. They're higher proof, majority corn. They're aging them in... MGP is throwing them in used oak barrels because it's a light whiskey. Sure, you, you don't do have it? to. Right. On the back end, these people that are buying those barrels are throwing them in a new oak and saying, oh, this is like a 14-year, <laughs> uh, 12 to twelve to 15, maybe even 17-year MGP whiskey, and people are going nuts for it. It was a light whiskey, and now it's... Interesting. It's a bourbon. It would be interesting to find out what the how that law works. Um, it's a loophole, yeah. and I'm pretty sure it'll get shut down soon. But this is me telling you, if, you're, if your distillery is putting out whiskeys that look, that are see-through or uh, pretty light for the age that they are, just think twice about it. Yeah. Because as much as there people are shooting for honesty in the whiskey industry, there's a lot of places that will capitalize on loopholes like this. Well, and on the flip side of that, if it tastes great, drink it. Yeah. I don't have a yeah. problem with it. I, I I do have a problem with the with you know the loopholes and calling it something that really isn't. But if, if everybody already knows that, even if they're calling it, if it tastes good, I'll get a bottle of it. But if you're taking something like that and then putting 150 bucks on it and saying it's a 17-year-old bourbon. That's what these people are doing. Uh, then that's kind of screwy. Then I think that's kind of that's manipulating the rules a little bit. You know what? Honestly, if people are buying it, that's on them. It passes uh, TTB. Depending on huh. the officer that is approving the label. Ah. So a little money into the table, maybe? Uh, TTB? I can't say that. Are we calling them out? I can't say that. <laughs> but there are... Once it's put in a new oak barrel, a new charred oak barrel, it is not able to be considered a whiskey specialty, which is where a lot of the finishes and stuff like that is going into. That is the legal classification category. Gotcha. Um, stuff even like barrel seagrass are considered a whiskey specialty because it's been finished in barrels that previously held something else. Right. So by definition, there is a portion of that whiskey that has – some sort of pure Madeira in it, you know, yeah, whether yeah. that Madeira was wet in the barrel or just in the wood, it right. doesn't matter. It doesn't it matter. Yeah. It has Madeira in it. Right. Or apricot brandy in the, in the case of uh, barrel seagrass, but it is now considered a whiskey specialty. If you are taking a used oak barrel, aging something for so long, which honestly is a smart thing to do. Sure. Because new oak, will not allow you to age stuff for 17 years and still be fine. Right. Uh, you throw it into a new oak barrel after the fact, you're still able to get that high age age statement without it being over oak. Right, right. And it would be interesting. They didn't sell out anyone on the podcast, which I understand. Yeah. But it would be interesting to hear about the brands that are doing that. And... Uh, so that'll be interesting to do a little research and figure out maybe who some of those are. We can Which let everyone now know. has got my my brain running, and now I'm thinking like I'm going to start looking for these yeah. labels and see who's putting out a, a such and such age statement. Right, it just doesn't look that way because in Scotch, like you're able to add coloring to 
to to your heart's desire. You, right. Scotch world, they can add whatever coloring they want to to the whiskey. Make it look as dark as they want to. Yep. As dark as they want to. And, and, you know, to a certain extent, that's part of keeping bottle presents um, the same on the shelf. You know, you don't want... Uh, I mean, let's say uh, your, your Macallan 12 is on a shelf. Right. You know, you take so many Macallan 12s and you have you have that batch. Well, that batch may come out lighter than the last batch. Right. So what would you do? You darken it up so it has the same shelf presence. And you know what? You could have gotten a very similar flavor profile from right. it. Right. But just because of the nature of the barrels, the the seasons that they've gone through, it, it's just slightly li- it's lighter. Just the perception at that yeah. point, yeah. And, and whiskey, you can't do that. Yeah. Or in American whiskey, you can't do that. Right. So uh, I guess it's kind of one way to trick the system um, currently. Currently, that's the way to trick yeah. the system. And everybody's finding these loopholes, especially in the newer contract distiller um, markets or NDP, non-distilling producer right. circles that are becoming super popular. And I'm not saying these brands do it, but NDPs currently like um, like Nulu. Nulu's an, an NDP. They're right. a non-distilling producer. Right. They will eventually put out their own product, I think. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they have a still. Which is honestly why how a lot of distilleries start is you you source good whiskey and then you create your own product. Yeah. Some are good. Some are, some out are of not Westfield, that good. Indiana. <laughs> out, of, uh, out of where? <laughs> Nowhere. Where's that no, from? Nowhere. Uh, Nowhere. West Fork? <laughs> No, no, I I am really hopeful for West. Fork. I am too, man. I really hope that some of their stuff starts coming out good. We'll we'll find out here soon on yeah. that. But you know, you'd mentioned Texas, so um, here in a couple of weeks, we'll have, we'll release an episode, and I'll talk a little bit about an event that we're going to go into. Alan Hill and I are going to be going to that. Shout out to Alan Hill. Shout out. Um, we're going down to um, Crowded Barrel for the Bastards Ball which I think they, they've got a bunch of different distillers from Texas that are going to be in that. And then we're also going to head over to Still Austin for their event yeah. and check those those places out. Um, so that one will be, you know, this when this is you know, posted next week, October 2nd, you said, this is when this is coming out, yeah. this weekend we'll be going to that. So um, we'll be yeah. talking about that You're too. You're going to be traveling like crazy in October. Pretty much, Family yeah, all in the first in week or so, yeah, yeah. Man. yeah. That's so, awesome. So, yeah, so I did already say that we're closed Yeah, a couple days, but... Sure did. Yeah. All right, man, what are you thinking? I think we should probably wrap this yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, we're done. Uh, we're, yeah, this, so the cigar, what are you getting on the cigar? You're in the very end of the final third. Yeah, uh, uh, the very end of the final third, it is like more of that uh, toasty cinnamon, all, yeah. all notes in that. In that range, the retro hill is spicy. It does not knock you over spicy. No, and, and like I said, this is a medium full. Um, you're not going to get the crazy strength level. Now, if you are retro hilling it, you're going to get a lot, a lot of spice. I mean, you're getting that red and black pepper, more red than black on yeah. the retro hill. Super good. This balances it out nice because, yeah. I mean, it's still over 122 proof, but it's you're got getting a, lot a lot of sweetness, sweetness to it. Yeah. And um, get in here and drink this because I got a lot of bottles. This Real is so quick, good. tell the people about those special edition the people? boxes. The people? The people. Which special edition boxes? The uh, knuckle sandwich boxes. So this is one of them. This is the knuckle sandwich chef special yearly release. They're doing the chef specials with Guy. Um, we also have a couple more boxes of the Pricks Fix. I, Prefix. I don't know which way yeah. we would call it. P-R-I-X. F-I-X-E. Yes. Yeah. Um, those. That one comes with the Connecticut um, Habano and Maduro in the in a Figurado. You get three of each of those. Plus you get a, the coin, the knuckle sandwich coin that's all numbered. Those those are just a sample box. You can get those. Um, we got a couple boxes of those. I'm I'm supposed to be getting a couple more. We'll see. If you want those, we'll have those here too. But, yeah, we're finally starting to get in some of the special stuff, and it's that time of year. It is. So, well. Oh, 
And also, Knuckle Sandwich 56 will be coming out. Ooh. So it should be the same as the 55, but with one extra ring gauge on one it. One extra so ring gauge. That Let's was a bad it. boy. We'll get as many of those as we can. So thanks a lot, guys, for listening again. Um, come in here and try these, and we will have them for quite a while. You can find me on Instagram at the Whiskey Pastor. And I'm at Final Third Cigar. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next week. Cheers. Cheers. Schnitzel, bitches. If you're still listening, be sure to uh, leave a comment, like the YouTube, and give us an honest five-star review. Yes, your on, most honest five stars are very important. <laughs> on whatever us. podcast service you're listening to. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, guys. Cheers.